Well, uh, since nobody came, um, I'm recording this class, like this part of the class, uh, to be watched some sometime later on. Okay, so we left our discussion on morphemes and we were talking about affixes so what are affixes affixes can be either prefixes and suffixes an affix is a morpheme that comes at the beginning if it's a prefix or at the ending uh, as a suffix of a base morpheme okay so we have a base morpheme normally a root and we attach an affix to it before, prefix, after, a suffix. Uh, an affix is usually a morpheme that cannot stand alone. So an affix is usually, in other words, a bound morpheme. Examples are the suffixes full, le, iti, nes. Uh, a few exceptions are able, like, and less because uh, they have uh, a meaning on their own, okay? Like and less, for example, are words themselves. Prefix is an affix that comes before a base morpheme. The in in the word inspect is a prefix. A suffix is an affix that comes after a base morpheme like, for example, the S for the plural in cats is a suffix. Affixes are all bound morphemes, except the abo. But in fact, abo and abo are not exactly the same morpheme. They are uh, homophones. Okay, so uh, we have like that I mentioned before and less that are words, but usually they are bound morphemes, okay? So we have a chart here with the prefixes. Prefixes are bound morphemes which occur only before other morphemes, whereas suffixes are bound morphemes which occur following other morphemes. For example, the final er for the performer of the action, singer, teacher, uh, performer, etc. The ist as in typist, pianist, or the li in the adverbs, mainly friendly and so on. Now, what are grammatical morphemes? Grammatical morphemes are opposed to lexical morphemes. So let's see what they are. Well, let's see the difference in meaning between apple and apples. What is the big difference in meaning here? What's the difference in the form of the word? Just the final s, the final suffix, the, uh, the suffix, of course. A suffix is final. So what does it tell you about these two words? Well, these two words do not change meaning. We just change grammar to give the idea of plural. But apple, apples, they have a very close meaning. So grammatical morphemes like these, the final S for plural, can have an internal structure, uh, uh, tells us that words can have an internal structure much like the syntax of phrases. So it's predictable. Whenever you put an S or ES or OES, you are making the word in its plural form. So morphemes such as the final S or RE, uh, in the case of the prefix RE, near the grammatical end of the continuum are called grammatical morphemes. Why? Because grammatical morphemes uh, have the property of changing the world so that the world, the word, sorry, so that it will fit grammatical rules. It will provide gender concordance, number, um, verb tense, and so on. We have discussed this in the last class. So now note that the grammatical morphemes include forms that we can consider to be words like the, a, and, and of, which are conjunctions, prepositions, and others that make up parts of words like the final s and the final ed, 
For example, in the words pencils, we have the base pencil, and we have its plural form pencils, which semantically are not that apart. They just gain this final S so that we have the idea of plural. In walked and walk, we have the same notion. We just have the idea of past tense or of past participle, depending on the context. But it's the, still the verb to walk. Now, what are the differences between each type of morpheme? We learned that these types of morpheme exist in relation to each other. They are defined in relation to each other. So what is a bound morpheme? It's what's not a free morpheme. What is a grammatical morpheme? It's what's not a lexical morpheme. What is a function morpheme? Uh, it's what is not uh, a content morpheme, and so on. Okay. So what is the function of each type of morpheme? And what is the difference between the content and lexical words, for example, or function and grammatical words? Let's see. Content words denote concepts such as subjects, actions, and ideas. So they are the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, the adverbs. Whereas, con sorry, content words are also open class words, which means that new words can be added to the language if necessary. We can create words. Neologisms are a proof of this. So, for example, steganography, which is the art of hiding information in electronic text. This is uh, a word that has been created up to the moment, in the moment that the, 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 the art of steganography has appeared. So we can create words. They are open class. That's what I mean when they are open class. Now, differently, function words uh, express grammatical functions. They are the prepositions, <clears throat> the articles, the conjunctions, the pronouns. And these words, <clears throat> sorry, these words are not created all the time. These words are, are I mean, they, they are more rigid. They exist in the language, and we don't need to create other words to provide their functions. So function words connect the content words to the larger grammatical context. They operate uh, in favor of grammar. Function words are also called closed class words because no new words are added to this class. Okay, so these are basically the types of morpheme and next class uh, since we do not have discussion today, next class we are supposed to discuss the new topic, which is the process of word formation. So we are going to see how English words are formed, the different processes for word formation, like prefixation, affixation, composition, blending, acronyms, and so on. But I'll leave this for next class because we were supposed to have a discussion and examples today, but no students came. So this is all for today, okay? And I hope you are here with me by next class, right? So see you on, see you on Thursday, okay? And uh, please don't miss class because... Well, we need to advance, and I'd like to do some exercises with you all together, right? Thank you.